So the Cowboys just got absolutely embarrassed in a home playoff loss uh, against the Packers. Excuse me for smiling so much. I thought of a joke from earlier. Uh, but yeah, that means it's time for a rebuild. Jordan Love and the Packers, and not only just their offense, their defense was exceptional in that game. Completely shut down the Cowboys. And of course, the Cowboys did end up scoring quite a few points near the end of the game in what I would consider to be garbage time. But let's be honest. Obviously, the Packers really controlled that game. And the Cowboys are incredibly talented. But just like with any team, there are a number of question marks moving forward with guys that have been here for a long time and been very successful. When healthy, like Tyron Smith, he might be on his way out, right? And there are a number of other players like Demarcus Lawrence that you see on the screen that how long does he have left in Dallas? Zach Martin, and that's not because Zach Martin is getting worse at all. That's certainly not the case. Still maybe the best guard in football, but age will eventually catch up to him as it catches up to everybody. So he might have another five years left in the NFL. That could be extremely reasonable for a player of his talent. He's someone that feels like they could just play until they don't want to anymore. But a number of these guys we will have to replace. And the only way to do it is let's get into it. Wouldn't be a bad idea to get rid of this guy to start, but I think we're going to rock with Big Mike. Oh, and they have superstar dev all over the place, but funnily enough, one guy that you could make a really good argument for having it doesn't. Jake Ferguson, I'd probably go star dev. He's a really, really good player. Only normal development, yet Luke Schoonmaker underneath him on the depth chart does have star or better, but it's going to be star, which is kind of wild. Jake Ferguson is entering that top 10 tight end conversation. There's so many talented tight ends in the league right now but this is the grouping i mean tyler smith should probably have superstar dev at this point one of the best left guards in the league but yeah i mean a lot of these overalls and dev traits are just not up to date it would seem tyron smith such a great player for so long injuries have obviously always been a problem for him but if you look at his contract his final year is 2023 so obviously this isn't real life this is just a, you know fantasy style rebuild but do we want to keep Tyron Smith around and pay him big money or look a different direction? We'll see. Always love how Hunter Lipke just has a backwards hat in his picture. But yeah, this team's obviously incredibly talented. So, you know, it's going to be one of the easier rebuilds, especially with how well the Cowboys playbooks play. Damone Clark, I like a lot. Uh, they have a lot of like safeties playing linebacker. And I think that was kind of evident against the Packers. They just couldn't really stop the run because they have, you know, Marquise Bell at 6'3", 205 pounds playing linebacker. He's just, that's not really his game. He's like a money backer type player, which obviously can be incredibly effective if you're facing a pass heavy offense, if you know they're going to pass quite a bit. If they're going to run, he could run into some problems. And they're hoping that Mozzie Smith can help that out. Nose tackle taken in the first round last year. Deron Bland is up to an 88 overall. I mean, this is going to be such a fun team to use because there's so many good players. The problem might be just holding on to everybody. So you have 25 mil in cap space. Zach Martin's got a pretty good contract, actually. It's going to get really expensive in 2024, but for right now, it's fine. But of course, you know, we're really more focused on 2024. Micah Parsons is going to have to be extended. That's going to be really expensive. It's going to be really tough to hold on to guys like Tyron Smith. We'll probably end up trading him at the midseason mark, I would say. A lot of team-friendly contracts that, I mean, are only going to be team-friendly for so long. Dak Prescott's contract gets up to about 60 mil. People want me to get rid of Dak and, and start anew. This was somebody that looked like they were going to win the MVP this year. Up to like, what, week 14 or something like that? Dak is obviously really solid, but the you know mark on his career so far is that he can't perform well in big games and he hasn't played well and also the team around him has let him down as well but Dak does not need to be replaced I don't know why that's a big narrative obviously you want the guy that can win in the playoffs but you know there's a thing in baseball where you know would you take the guy who hit you know 300 the whole year OPS at a thousand, but maybe in the last 20 AB, somebody has better numbers than that, and this guy's slumping. You'd still take the guy who's shown that he's consistent over the guy that's hot right now. It's just, it's a better test of long term success. Obviously, it hasn't worked up to this point with Dak, 
but uh, it's very difficult to better to get a better quarterback than Dak Prescott. I mean, what? There may be eight teams in the NFL have a better one, maybe ten at the most, in my opinion. I don't know. It's tough. Stefan Gilmore expiring contract. Tony Pollard. I'm just gonna trade these guys. I think it's the right move. I like that our main scout already is just handled, set up to take care of right outside linebacker and left tackle. Two of the top three strengths of the draft class. Weaknesses of the class, center, left guard, and left end. Things that we don't necessarily need. We want to get another like rush player to replace Demarcus Lawrence. We just get a right outside linebacker that could do it. So we do need to move some things around, but already a couple of these are set up. Probably we'll just leave central how it is. 5-1 at the midseason mark, which is not surprising at all. The rest of the NFC East is doing quite well. And when we look at the players ready to negotiate, it's players we talked about already. 2024 cap room is a little over $4 million, which is nothing. So the reality becomes we just can't retain almost anybody in here unless we start trading players. So we're obviously trying to win a Super Bowl this year. That's the entire goal of these rebuilds is to build a super competitive team. The Cowboys already have that, so we're trying to win Super Bowls. Now, when we look at the team salaries, some of these contracts get really, really expensive in 2024, but I'm not going to move Dak. Michael Gallup, we need to trade probably, and there's a penalty associated with doing that. So do we bite the bullet now, or do we hold on to him? I think we probably are stuck for right now. The only real savings can be found with Tony Pollard, with Stefan Gilmore, with Jordan Lewis, with Terrence Steele. But there's also a huge penalty. Terrence Steele is locked up for six years. I mean, we might, might be able to develop him a little bit, but that is a bad looking contract. Neville Gallimore, Tyler Biotish. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta do some stuff to uh, give us a little bit of flexibility. Tony Pollard is gonna be really important right now. I think I can trade Stefan Gilmore, but a lot of these players, I think we just have to say, all right, we're gonna let you walk because if we're trying to win now, we need them on our team. Now it could hurt us a little bit in the future, but at what point we're not rebuilding? I don't know. It puts us in a bit of a tough spot. A pretty incredible trade for us. Some type of combination of Stefan Gilmore for Brian O'Neill is something I want to do. Now, I might be able to get an even better pick. 2024s are supposed to be a top five pick right now. And we might be able to get it. Now, if we do maybe a pick swap, projected number 27 might even be better than that. And something else, and we can get Brian O'Neill. Now, the problem with that lies in the fact that Terrence Steele we're pretty much locked into right now. What is Brian O'Neill's contract? He's got four years left, so I'm extremely comfortable getting him. We get another corner. Now, the Vikings corners are not great. Makai Blackman could be okay. We do that. And we are off to a bang. Stefan Gilmore, Dante Fowler, Neville Gallimore. Our first round pick this year, our third round pick this year, our fourth round pick next year for Brian O'Neill, Makai Blackman, and their first. Now, it's probably not going to end up being the top five like it's projected to be right now. So we did probably acquire that at its most expensive price point. Ravens 7-0. Vikings are 2-5, and five, but a lot of teams are. And that could just be a bad start. They could turn it around very easily. Getting that Cardinals first round pick, usually not too bad of an idea. They're doing very poorly. But... Brian O'Neill, I think, is our future starting left tackle. Terrence Steele might still be able to be our starting right tackle, but Tyron Smith is the difficult one. He is under contract for just this year, as you guys know. This could be a franchise tag and trade candidate. That is certainly an option. I do not want Terrence Steele on the team, really, just because the contract is so not good. I just don't really know a way around that or the Michael Gallup contract right now other than just taking the penalty right away but we'd be affected in 2024 so I don't know I don't want to pay uh, pay Michael Gallup this money is the problem now obviously Stefan Gilmore is a great player it's just that 
one year under contract. You don't really need three amazing corners in Madden. In real life, I I really think it's a, a great strength if you have a great nickel corner. Having, you know, three great boundary corners doesn't really work. There are only two boundaries. But a guy that can play in the slot that is good in both man coverage against smaller receivers who are often shifty, right, but can also come up and tackle, incredibly valuable. Not every boundary, in fact, a lot of boundary corners cannot do that, cannot tackle as well as you need to. So we have Makai Blackman for depth, uh, Jordan Lewis as well, but we plan on trading him, so Blackman was pretty important to get. Noah Igbenogany down there as well. I like Sam Williams, but I do want to trade Dorrance Armstrong, I think. He's also somebody with an expiring contract. It's just, I think it's going to be tough to hold on to him, is what it comes down to. I'm trying to get as much value back as I possibly can. So we're essentially trading guys that you know, I don't necessarily want to trade, but I might as well get something back for them. You know, getting Joshua Palmer is really not all that bad, but it's an expiring contract. We can't really afford to pay anybody right now. But Dorrance Armstrong Jr., Jordan Lewis, and a seventh gets us a second round pick from the Chargers instead of Joshua Palmer. You just get a second round pick, which I think is pretty nice. Don't really want to do a whole lot more. Again, Gallup and Terrence Steele are just two very tough situations to be in. Tyron Smith is another one as well. I think I will ultimately end up franchise tagging him. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that. It's just what I think. Right now, negative 13 million in 2024 cap space. So we cannot sign anybody here. We can pick up the fifth year options on Trey Lance, which we won't, and Micah Parsons, which we certainly will. But, I mean... If we're not going to be able to re-sign any of these guys, I might as well just rip the Band-Aid off a little bit. I think I should trade Michael Gallup and Terrence Steele, probably. It's just, we don't need Terrence Steele at this point. Michael Gallup is replaceable. I, I know it's, it's a tough spot early on, but guess what? You know, tough decisions have to be made. Michael Gallup, Terrence Steele, and J. Ron Curse headed to the Jets. Also sending a fifth next year, a, a fourth the year after that, or a third this year and a second next year from the Jets. Just had to rip the Band-Aid off. I mean, this is a really talented team, obviously, and we're still trying to win now. That's why I'm not trading guys like Tyron Smith or Tony Pollard, because they're going to be super important. Some of the guys we just traded, though, not all that important. Just did want to keep some depth on the team, obviously. You know, I looked at all the different position groups, and we are really just solid across the board. We have Texas Legends, the Sweat Bandit, Agent Zero, DeMarvion Overshone, unfortunately injured in real life. Obviously, I'm a huge Texas fan. It's tough, you know, I grew up in New Jersey. He's a big Giants fan, big Yankees fan, uh, but a lot of family in Texas. Grew up a Texas Longhorns fan because of them, and obviously some rough patches in there for a while, but... Texas is in a good spot, and DeMarvian Overshone definitely helped pave the way. He was such a great player, and uh, is kind of in that role of, you know, the spy-type money backer that, you know, you've seen thrive in the Cowboys' defense at times this year with guys like Marquise Bell. But uh, DeMarvian Overshone could end up being even better in that role. Really, really fun player. 90 hit power is crazy high. This is like your user dream. 90 hit power seems crazy. I don't really remember Marvion Overshone laying in the wood like that. But, I mean, not to say that he couldn't, but 90 hit power is... I mean, that's got to be as high as almost anybody in the game. I swear. But yeah, he's sick. Malik Jefferson wasn't really all that great in Texas, unfortunately. But he's in there as well. Now, I'm curious about this. Does anyone in the league have 90 hit power at that weight? Because Overshone is not much more than about 220 pounds, probably. He's 220 exactly. He's got to have the highest hit power of any middle linebacker at even near that weight. So there are only three players in the league, or four, I guess, with 90 or higher, uh, multiple rookies. Noah Sewell, DeMarvian Overshone, Denzel Perryman, Rashawn Evans, and Bobby Wagner. I just, he just doesn't seem like he's in that same group. I don't, I, I, not to say that he's not a good player or won't be, but 90 hit power is 
insane. There's no right outside linebacker in the league with 90 hit power. There's no left outside linebacker in the league with 90 hit power. There are a handful of safeties though. All right, strong safety at least. And no free safety. So yeah, he has some of the highest hit power in the game. And he's a rookie. Very interesting. But anyway, back to the rebuild. Little tangent there. Our focus scouting is going to be for outside linebacker. You know, I think I probably just won't need to draft an offensive tackle. I usually don't. You can just usually just find them in free agency for cheaper and they're better. And it's a tough position to develop in this game. I don't usually do any XP sliders or anything like that or change the progression and regression. It's just a lot to do every single time I make a franchise league. I wish the settings would save and I could just import them at the start or it would give me an option. Hey, do you want to use your commonly used settings? That would be a great quality of life feature in my opinion. The 2024 negative 81 million now. That's obviously factoring in uh, the big cap penalty. So it is uh, not a great time to be us. I, us and the Cowboys makes me like cringe a little bit, but uh, not a great time to be the Cowboys in terms of salary the way I've set it up now. But we are just trying to win any way we can. And I, I think we're doing our best to set us up for the future rather than just playing for this year. We're kind of like doing both right now, playing both sides, but obviously want to win this year as well. Now, DeAnthony Jordan, he looks pretty good. B block shed, B finesse moves, A power moves, A tackling. Could be a player we trade up for if maybe he's a top five talent in the class. Remember, we do have that Vikings pick now. A lot of round one to two talents, which isn't bad. It's just not like amazing, obviously. All of these outside linebackers are round one to two talent. All of them. And <laughs> no one falls in any other range here at the top. Final record this season, 15 and two in the regular season. This is what the Cowboys do in Madden Sim. And also, I guess in real life, except they just don't win in the playoffs. Dak Prescott was unbelievable. About 4,400 yards passing, 45 touchdowns to just three interceptions. Really one of the greatest quarterback seasons of all time. Rushing, Tony Pollard was amazing. 18 touchdowns. I mean, if you have 45 passing touchdowns from your quarterback and 18 from your main running back, it's one of the most prolific offenses ever. C.D. Lamb with a great year. Brandon Cooks, 12 touchdowns. 12 for Jalen Tolbert as well. I mean, maybe receiver three in this offense is going to be extremely valuable. So receiver is going to be near the top of the list. And when you look at tackles for loss and sacks, oh my goodness. Micah Parsons, 22 TFLs and 17 and a half sacks. Ridiculous. But he maybe wasn't even the best defender on this team in terms of production as Demarcus Lawrence had 23 sacks. Nine for Osa Adigazua brother of Giants legend Oamabe Odigazua. Legend might be a stretch. Five interceptions for Trayvon Diggs, three for Marquis Bell, three for Leighton Van Der Esch into Ron Bland, two for Donovan Wilson, and one for Malik Hooker. It's one of the best teams ever, it seems, and this is no surprise based on Madden Simulation. Averaging close to 32 points per game, not near a record. I think the Saints have the record, like Drew Brees era, like mid-2010s like 37, something like that. I mean, still, to average over 30 points per game is great. And uh, we'll see if this is a playoff disappointment. Certainly an option. Chauncey Golston at defensive tackle now. Why does that always surprise me? He's only 268 pounds is why. Because I remember when I was doing, of course, you guys know, maybe not all of you, but a lot of you know, I a huge hobby, and especially for the channel, I do scouting for the NFL draft, watch tape. Chauncey Golston was an edge at Iowa and wasn't like the biggest guy, as you can see, only 268 pounds here, which is very light for a defensive tackle. Not so light for a defensive end, but I guess he's playing defensive tackle for the Cowboys. I don't really see him on the field too often. Could be a rotational player. I'm not, I'm not really sure if he plays all that much. You know, of course, I've watched a ton of Cowboys games, which is tough when, if you're not doing film study, all 22 of... NFL, which I don't typically do a lot of anymore. It was really good to get into like, okay, here's what makes a good player. Here's what they do to be a really good player. And you can, you know, kind of apply that to when you're watching college film. But I don't really watch a ton of NFL, you know, tape study anymore. So, um, yeah, especially if not done it for the Cowboys. 
Don't know if Chauncey Golston rotates in. Obviously, he plays a little bit. But uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. Division round of the playoffs will be against the Philadelphia Eagles. The Fraud Bowl. Who's an Eagle and Cowboy? Miles Austin was the first one that jumped to mind. Doesn't really matter. See if we can get the win here. Obviously, playing for Super Bowl year one would be really nice. And it's a 35-24 victory that puts the Cowboys into the conference championship. The Deion Sanders Bowl. Charles Haley, another one. And I'm, I'm sure there are obviously a ton more. But we'll see if the Cowboys can get the win here at Jerry World. Most recently, they couldn't. And that was only in the wild card against the seven seed Packers. This one could be a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, but this is a team that went 15 and two now in the regular season in this franchise file. See what they can do. Defense not off to a great start, but the offense answered. It's 14 to seven Cowboys, 21 seven now, 28 to seven. This is looking like the Packers game, just in reverse. It is 28 to seven still into the fourth quarter. Niners can't find the scoreboard, and that actually ends up being your final score. Defense really held strong there. Purdy with a bad game. Dak with a great game. One pick for Dak, though. Purdy did not really do anything. Was the interception returned for a touchdown? Deron Bland had it, of course, so maybe it was. No, it wasn't. But there was a really quick score in there. And it's not a pick six. And it's going to be Ravens Cowboys in the Super Bowl. 15 and 2 versus 14 and 3. Before we jump in, though, I do want to see potential dev trade upgrades. Would be good to hit the actual screen that it needs to be. Adjust lineup in order to see that. And who could really go up here? Dak to Superstar X Factor. Tony Pollard, maybe, as well. Both of those happen. CD Lamb goes up to Superstar X Factor as well. Jake Ferguson up to Star. And then defensively. Bell up to star as well. Trayvon Diggs up to superstar X Factor. I think everything else was the same. Osa Adigazua actually went up to star as well. Yeah, everyone getting upgrades. Not really surprising. Mozzie Smith with star dev. I'm surprised there either. Most of this team's going to be able to stay together. But of course, probably losing Tyron Smith, Tyler Biotish. Offensive line going to be a focus in the draft, but we're not super worried about that right now. More focused on winning this game and starting a rebuild with the Super Bowl. Rarity to do that. Not a surprise to see it happen here with the Cowboys. They are incredibly overpowered in simulation. And we'll see what happens. Super Bowl, Ravens, Cowboys. Would have been a possibility in real life had the Cowboys not just get embarrassed at home. Um, not just get embarrassed had they not got whatever dallas cowboys are tied with the ravens here seven to seven now 10 7 ravens trying to fight back and get back in this game they've tied it back at 10 very close so far into the fourth quarter first and goal from the one it's been a lot of tony pollard three yard rush nine yard rush seven yard rush five yard rush nine yard rush it is the tony pollard show right now ravens did call a timeout it would actually be quite wise to stay out of the end zone here. And that's exactly what we're going to do. It's second and goal. We don't need a touchdown. I'm sure the Ravens would like for us to score a touchdown. I would prefer not to score one. That's a mod Bradshaw this and just not go in. Now on third and goal, we might be able to. But we could take 40 seconds off the clock. The Ravens would have time to answer. But eliminating all their timeouts is a good way to go. And this way, with actually scoring a touchdown, we're not going to be able to lose in regulation. So I think that was the move. It's very weird to use a kicking meter that isn't Young Way Koo in my main Falcons franchise series. It just goes so slow in comparison with all his superstar abilities. But 17-10, in a very good spot for a Season 1 Super Bowl. And that's how you know this is a video game. Got him. Ravens, Lamar Jackson, looking for a chance to tie or even win in regulation with a two-point conversion. I'd be shocked to see the CPU try that. But a minute and a half, they do have plenty of time. They really do. But we'll see if they can actually move the ball down the field here. And that's good defense by Deron Bland. Good recovery. Go underneath, Lamar. I'm actually cool with a check down. That's going to take 20 seconds off the clock. We're going to be under a minute here by the time this ball is snapped, probably. 
maybe just over. 101. Pretty good coverage. Dak no, no, is not on the field. Deep shot for Odell from Lamar. Only his third in completion of the game. I'm trying to say Duran Bland and Dak came out. Oh my goodness, that could have been bad. We're going to go man coverage here. We're going to play over the top. I would be very okay if they got the first down as long as they stayed inbounds. And that's fine. They convert. Again, 15 seconds going to go off the clock here. Just about 40 seconds remain in the game. That's going to be wide open. Or it's not. What an incredible play. Are you kidding me? Look at the aerial leap from Makai Blackman, who we traded for. Paying dividends already. We're going to shade over the top here. I, I think pressing could be a mistake. And it may have been. Odell catches it down to the 46. Again, about 10 seconds going to go off the clock. Lamar might have three more plays here at the absolute most. Here's a throwaway. I'm thinking two more plays with 11 seconds. I wish I could tell my outside corners to get back and the inside corners on the blitz here to get up. And the blitz works to perfection. It's Israel Mukwamu with the sack on Lamar Jackson. The Super Bowl is won for the... Oh. I don't even know if I can say it. The Super Bowl is won for the... Jeez. Uh, the Ravens lose the Super Bowl. We're successful here in year one. And we'll move on to year number two. As Lamar... This is the dumbest Super Bowl celebration ever. Lamar just... Oh, yeah, dude. Happy for you guys. <laughs> I don't know. Dak only threw for 106 yards in the Super Bowl. But, I mean, this is a J.J. McCarthy-type performance. Only 15 attempts... Tony Pollard, 22 attempts for 72 yards, two touchdowns. What a weird game. It was a defensive game. Defense really wins championships. We had a ton of pressure. Digazua with a big game. Israel Mukwamu as well. Of course, game winning sack. Donovan Wilson with half a sack. Very weird Super Bowl, but Cowboys, of course, come out on top. Dak didn't even win MVP. Patrick Mahomes takes it home. No Cowboys in there except for Coach of the Year, Mike McCarthy. Tony Pollard wins Super Bowl MVP, averaging just over three yards per carry. Unreal performance from him. Negative 61 mil here. Is there any way I can franchise tag Tyron Smith? I'm not sure. I'd kind of like to. Obviously, pick up the fifth-year option on Micah Parsons. Gives us a little bit of a window there. Losing not that many players, but important players. Biotish, starting center. Tyron Smith, starting left tackle. Tony Pollard, starting running back. Super Bowl MVP. It's going to be a tough offseason because those are three really important positions that we have to replace. We're going to franchise tag Tyron Smith. Um, that gives us another year to work with. But I obviously can't do anything in free agency. I have no money. Anthony Jordan is a top five talent in the class. You have pretty good Demarcus Lawrence replacement. Do need center really badly. Um, geez, here, what do we do? Kevin Boston in, in round three is going to be the best we can do. Oh, draft time picking at number 11. That's our only first round pick. Question just becomes do we trade up for a guy like DeAnthony Jordan? 21 years old with. Elite acceleration, elite change of direction, good speed, but ran 4-6 flat at his pro day. He looks very, very good. I don't know that we're going to see a better defensive end in these drafts. So if that's a position we're, you know, very interested in, I think it would certainly make sense to at least consider that as an option. Now, I also made sure that Shelton Griffin was not only a focus player week 11, but also in the offseason. He is a true top five talent. Now, doesn't look especially amazing, right? When you go to the skills, he's got a juke move. B spin move, A ball carrier vision, but especially a juke move is usually a really good tell that this is a really good player. A juke move is tough to get and can be as high as 99. So Shelton Griffin in round two, somebody we're definitely going to want. Kevin Boston looks very good. I think we're going to be able to solve our problems right here like, pretty easily. 
Might have to navigate the board a little bit. I, I, I mean, a day three pick who looks like a really solid interior offensive lineman. 6'4", 314, elite change direction. Maybe not the best run blocker, but that's okay. Yeah, I kind of think we should make a move up. Unless he goes at number one overall, which is a possibility. I wasn't going to trade up to number one. So, D'Anthony Jordan is off the board. I think Number one is just very tough to trade for. But outside of that, not really a player I would take until maybe Shelton Moon. But I think it might just be better to trade down, get more picks, address more positions of need. Shelton Moon is definitely a good player. Not nearly as good as the defensive end that we obviously didn't have a chance to get. But... Will Felder could be okay. It's not a need right this second. I know it just will be a need. But that running back, we need that right now. We need interior offensive line right now. I think it's a trade down spot at number 11. And Shelton Moon goes a pick ahead of us anyway. So we don't pick again until round two, pick 21. So I do want to move back in this first round. I mean, the Vikings are offering me our first round pick back. Plus... Their first round pick next year. That's kind of tough to turn down. Kind of like exactly what I'm looking for. I'm not going to overthink it. We're going to make that trade happen. We're moving back to 32. I'm slightly worried about the running back being off the board by pick 32. It looks like he's going to be available. It looks that way. He is the 29th ranked player in the draft right now. But when... You're talking about, I'm not going to say generational, but potentially the best player in the draft, which he's certainly top five. We know that for a fact. I don't really want to leave it to chance. So I, I do think I'm going to make a move up. 32 and... I mean, it shouldn't cost a whole heck of a lot. Bear signs Tony Pollard. Congratulations to him. I mean, this surely is not going to work. I just want to see where I am. I, I'm thinking maybe I can trade for like 28 with this package of picks. It's a 5 and a 7. It's not a ton, but I'm not trying to move up a ton. Trading a bunch of picks here, including a 2025 third rounder, to move up just four spots. Kind of a lot to move up from 32 to 28. But again, I just don't want to miss out on this running back, which sounds crazy. But in the first round, it obviously makes a ton of sense here at the end because... Get the fifth-year option. Get the guy for his prime. And in Madden, you're not going to regress too much anyway. So hopefully this player is still available. And he is. Might have been there at 32. I didn't want to chance it. Shelton Griffin out of South Carolina. Joined South Carolina running back Rico Dowdle. Just a solid athlete with a juke move, a ball carrier vision. Seems pretty well-rounded. Should be a really, really nice player. We know he's a top five talent in the draft with hidden development. 91 speed, 92 acceleration, 91 agility is great. 87 change of direction. How about that for a Tony Pollard replacement? Only 197 pounds. So, I mean, kind of a change of pace guy like Tony Pollard. But that's going to be our bell cow. Near the back end of the second round now. Round 2, pick 21. We also have round 2, pick 32. There were a couple of players that I thought were pretty good in this range. There was a receiver that I thought looked okay. Not sure if he's still available. In fact, looks like he's probably not. No, he is. There he is, Alton Baldwin. He has A, catching traffic, A, catching B, release. F, deep route running, but seems to be a pretty good athlete. Obviously, F, deep route running, slightly concerning. But could definitely be a decent player. I don't think we need to take this pick. I don't think we need to. We can trade back, maybe get something next year. And then take the other pick at the end of the second round. Okay, trading a second round pick for two-thirds. I think it makes sense. One this year, one next year from Chicago. I just uh, think it, you know, it makes a little bit more sense. If there's nobody we want at that pick for sure, it makes more sense to just get more picks uh, for more players. So I think Kevin Boston's going to be the first one because it's the most important. We need a starting center. Looks solid enough, right? And honestly, is a fantastic athlete. Now, strength is apparently only just good, but was the top of the class at the bench press at the Combine, and second at Pro Day, at his Pro Day. Elite agility, elite acceleration is great too. He looks phenomenal. Does have hidden dev. 88 strength, 85 acceleration, 73 agility, 67 speed. 
Looks like an awesome starting center right away. Is a left-handed center, though, which I noticed, which is kind of interesting. But he looks awesome. I think that's a starter. Outside linebacker has elite speed, ran the 4 fours at his pro day. Don't necessarily need another, like, pass coverage type linebacker. But if he's available with my next pick, might consider that. I think Alton Baldwin should be the pick here, though. I do like the look of Chris McLean with my fourth round pick. Looks definitely serviceable, but Alton Baldwin will be the pick. Need more depth at receiver, at least. He will be the player we select. Only normal dev, 91 speed. We know he's not a crazy athlete, but for his size, he is. 6'3", 231. Good speed, good agility. If he had hidden dev, you know, maybe he's receiver three this year. Probably will remain Jalen Tolbert. And this pick has to count. And I think that other offensive linemen... Chris McLean will be my fourth round pick if he's available. So I think Russell Sheffield's going to be the guy. Could take a corner if these guys are really good athletes, maybe. Didn't really look at that. Javon Craig is actually pretty good. Has a tackle as well. Looks like a slot corner to me. Keon Winston, a catching, a press B zone coverage. Looks more like a safety. Very good speed. I might need, I know, I might need more day three picks. This defensive tackle on day three ran in the four sixes at his pro day. Elite speed, good strength. 6'2", 289. Offers us some pass rush on the inside. I need more like fourth round picks. That's going to be the way to success here. I guess I'm going to take Russell Sheffield right now. I think that's the move. Or do we take Javon Craig now? I, I think I'm going to trade future picks to move up. Russell Sheffield looks really good. Other players probably at more important positions. I definitely can't draft all these guys. I'm going to take Sheffield. Maybe can move him back to safety. I think he's fast enough to be able to do that. Ran in the four fours. Kind of a weird thing, but we'll see what we have here. Only normal dev, but does have quite enough speed to play safety. 89 speed, 88 acceleration. Could be something there. See if anything makes it to us at the end of the fourth round. This is where a lot of players we want could go off the board. I'd be okay if Javon Craig gets selected, but... I'm hoping the rest are still available and only one player made it here. So the guard is gone. Keon Winston made it. Don't have to trade back up. I think that's okay. Winston has great press, zone coverage, catching, great speed. Tackling leaves a bit to be desired, but does have hidden dev. 92 speed, 91 acceleration, 90 jumping. I think there's something there as well. Might change some of these positions around a little bit, but... I think we did pretty well in this draft. And this is how things went. I think pretty well. Nothing crazy. I mean, Shelton Griffin's a 78. That's a really nice draft pick. Can't really get mad at that. Juke move is a 91. Spin move only a 78. Overall, very, very solid. Obviously not better than Tony Pollard right now, but could be, you know, in a couple of years. Kevin Boston's a 72. Alton Baldwin's a 74. Russell Sheffield, 72. Keon Winston is a 70. I think that defensive end is going to be pretty good. I don't know if he's going to be the best player in the draft, but he certainly could be. And he's not. Sergio Toon, the guard, looked very good. Is an 82 overall. Looks really, really good. Anthony Jordan is an 80. Really, really good for a defensive end. Although, looking at him, doesn't actually look like amazing. Looks really solid, but it's tackling. That's really boosting his overall acceleration is really good too. But I definitely would have been stoked with the pick, but I'm not like super mad we missed out on him. Another 80 was a fifth round fullback. We of course got Shelton Griffin. And other than that, I feel like we did pretty well with where we were. Definitely could have been better, but easily could have been worse. Javon Craig was a 75 overall, ended up being pretty good. Uh, we ended up drafting a linebacker we didn't need instead. Good move as always. Chris McLean, I would have drafted if he made it to the end of the fourth round. He didn't, but also looks solid. Well, I found out the dev trait of our running back. It was star, and it's now superstar. So our rookie running back is guaranteed to have superstar dev, because we just saw it happen. You know, it is interesting about Alton Baldwin, though, that may, it might actually make me start him over Jalen Tolbert in that wide receiver three spot. He's only 21. He's uh, one of the Baldwin brothers you don't hear about too much. But we're going to throw him in there, I think. 
and he actually might play over Jalen Tolbert. He's only going to be one overall behind him after this drill. It's kind of a no-brainer. I thought there would be more of a gap. I thought maybe it'd be like a 71 overall. That's why I said Jalen Tolbert can keep the job. But if it's this close, what's the point? I think Alton Baldwin going to be our receiver three. So this will be the team for season number two, trying to be repeat Super Bowl champions, obviously have downgraded at center and running back. For now, we'll see if that remains as we move through this thing, but our defense looks even better, I would say, than the Super Bowl winning team, just because guys are getting upgraded, brought in some more depth as well. Don't know what we want to do with Winston just yet. Could move back to safety. Same with Sheffield. I think there's going to be depth for right now. And Alton Baldwin, I hope, has a good rookie year. I mean, if he goes out and catches double-digit touchdowns the same way that Jalen Tolbert did last year, well, he's probably going to be up there for rookie of the year. So we'll move him into that slot wide receiver position as well as wide receiver three. So we'll see what happens. Our running back is not, you know, one-dimensional is not right, but he's not very good in a lot of different areas. I, I would say maybe he's slightly one-dimensional. We don't have a lot of other guys that are good at anything either, so he's going to have to just be our every down running back. We should have a lot more money in 2025. Should. We'll see if that ends up being the case. Right now, salary cap is obviously negative 79.9 million, but I'm not sure if that's going to be the case for 2025. We have expiring contracts for a number of massive players. Zach Martin, C.D. Lamb, Dak Prescott, Tyron Smith, Demarcus Lawrence, LVE, Brandon Cooks. I mean, it's a lot of this team. So we took this, the salary cap penalty for 2024 so that we might have a chance in 2025. This is going to be a tough team to keep together. We're going to do the best we can, obviously. And of course, trades are going to have to be made. We'll see what we can do. I would guess I'll see at the midseason mark. Or here, I'm back again. Alton Baldwin is going to get open deep down the field, make him a more well-rounded player. Alton Baldwin is going to get plus two to release and plus two to deep route running. It's going to be a nice upgrade for him. And yeah, I I'm pretty happy with, with where we are at the receiver position. Could definitely draft one. Brandon Cooks is going to end up regressing. Need to hold on to C.D. Lamb. I'm really curious to see how much money we're going to have in 2025 because right now it says negative 80 million, but that's not really what it's going to be. I need to see it be like at least 80 million if we're going to have a chance to bring back half the players I actually want to bring back. So, you know, we'll see what happens, obviously. No promises. Tyrant Smith might end up being somebody that gets traded here at the deadline. Definitely a possibility. Shelton Griffin, I did receiving back. I'm going to do power back now. I know it's not actually boosting his overall at all. I just want to make him slightly more well-rounded if I can. So that way he's a higher overall for goal line back and a higher overall for third down back. Make him somebody that can be on the field every single down and not come off the field. So again, we'll see what happens. But um, it's a big boost for Makai Blackman. I think I will just... See you at the midseason mark. Five and two at the midseason mark, doing quite well. And we have 142 million in 2025 cap room, which is the number I really needed to see. I said at least 80. It's certainly that. Still going to be tough to bring back everybody. We're not going to be able to because we can just go, all right, Tyron Smith, more than 20. Brandon Cooks, at least 10, probably. So 16.7 over three, so not quite, but. I don't know if we even want him. Zach Martin's 20. Leighton Van Der Esch for a year is probably going to be like at least eight. Again, it says 13. Yeah, but it's not quite. Yeah, so see the cap hit is where we kind of expected to be at eight. Osa Adigazua is going to be expensive. Lawrence is going to be 20 mil, probably something in that neighborhood at least. 18. Um, Marquise Bell could be fairly expensive. Dak is going to be 50 mil. It's just, it's... It's so tough. Dak has to come back. I know Cowboys fans don't want to hear that for some reason. Some of them. Again, it's very tough to do much better than that. CD Lamb's the first one where it's like, okay, we just have to. He's a 99 overall receiver, one of the best in the league. Dak Prescott, got to bring him back. He's back as well. So that's already, now we have 80 million, not even. Demarcus Lawrence probably should be traded. 
Tyron Smith probably should be as well. I don't know if I'm going to do that. Obviously, we want to win this year. Want to win another Super Bowl. But can we get can we take like a slight downgrade to get better long term? I don't know. What am I talking about? Obviously, we have no cap room this year, so I can't trade those guys. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I don't know how I forgot about that. <laughs> I guess I thought... I don't know. I, I was combining like, well, we're going to have money in 2025, but we don't have them under contract in 2025. Dumb of me. Ooh, interesting. Kyrie Silas, top five talent. Could be our Demarcus Lawrence replacement. I love to see that out, 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 uh, outside linebacker just because it's kind of rare. Let's try and extend... I mean, we. I'm moving his position to middle linebacker. Or even safety, maybe. We cannot pay Marquise Bell like he's an edge rusher. It would be absolutely ridiculous. Also, I keep calling him Marquise because I thought that's what it was, even though I obviously I want to say Marquise. I just looked it up because it, it felt so weird to keep saying that. And it is Marquise. I guess I just misheard it, and I've started saying it at this point. Um, yeah, it's Marquise Bell. I'm glad I looked into that because that's definitely annoying that I've been saying Marquise. Now, there are names similar that, like, in I want to say Marquez Valdez Scantling, but it is actually Marquez. But yeah, Mar Marquise Bell, not Marquise. Thankfully, which it just feels so much better to say Marquise. No offense if your name is Marquise out there. It just doesn't flow as well, in my opinion. Which, for what it's worth, maybe not much. Zach Martin, I'd like a two-year extension close to 20 mil. 53 million remaining. Osa Adigazua needs to come back. This is a big piece of our defense. He is expensive, but probably worth it. And he is back as well. 40 million now. Smith is going to be the guy that maybe a franchise tag and trade it, but actually do it this time. Bell... Kind of in a tough spot. He still should stay at linebacker. I'm hoping at least sub-linebacker. But it might move him off the depth chart at linebacker here. Yeah, it does. Makes him our starting strong safety, which... I mean, we could do worse than that. Russell Sheffield still wouldn't play, like, a ton. And then specialist-wise, Bell would still be sub-linebacker. And Donovan Wilson would still play. I'm actually very okay setting the team up like this and bringing back Marquise Bell on a more favorable deal. Caleb Tayton, by the way, the defensive tackle I wanted to draft and couldn't end up getting. 90 strength, 80 speed, 82 finesse moves. He's only a 73 overall, but he's obviously a lot better than that just based on his main attributes there. His dev trait is only star, but still would have been a nice player to have. Five-year extension for Marquise Bell is accepted, and we should be able to move him back now. Leighton Van Der Esch, maybe a one-year deal. I don't really want to give him a big-time extension. He's not going to accept this. Oh, he does, just because he has full interest. Okay, very lucky with that. We have 25 mil now, which is essentially enough for one of these guys. Or a contract extension, and then a trade. So maybe a one-year deal for Demarcus Lawrence. He's back. And then we could tag Tyron Smith and get a receiver. That's what we're going to do. Am I just going to keep franchise tagging Tyron Smith forever? I'm going to have no money again for free agency, but I mean, Tyron Smith is better than anybody we can sign in free agency anyway. We went 14-3, now into the divisional here. Another great season for Dak Prescott. This time, 53 touchdowns to only six interceptions. 4,800 passing yards. Amazing. Shelton Griffin wasn't even that bad as a rookie. Usually we see these rookies not perform all that well until they're like a 90 overall. But Shelton Griffin performed very well, given my expectations. Only six touchdowns, but they all went to Dak anyway. I mean, look at these numbers. C.D. Lamb with an incredible season. Cooks was very solid. Alton Baldwin had a great rookie year, close to 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns. 14 TDs for Jake Ferguson. And then defensively, again, it's, it's more of the same for our pass rush. Micah Parsons, 21 sacks, 21 tackles for loss. Lawrence was really good too. Got plenty of interceptions, really. This is a very good team that continues to play well. And we'll see if we can repeat as Super Bowl champions. Now, the Commanders were off to a hot start, cooled down a little bit, and they're out of the playoffs already. And it is another conference championship appearance for this Dallas Cowboys team. See if we can beat the Eagles. 
Don't mind doing that ever. Home field advantage never hurts either. Up 3-0 here early. Low scoring game. Now 10-0 as we approach halftime. Eagles on the board of the field goal. And an instant reaction touchdown. We answer as well. 17-10. We approach the fourth quarter. Extended to two touchdowns. Eagles right back in it with another touchdown. But their defense is not showing up. What's new? 31-17 is your final. Cowboys second Super Bowl appearance in two years. Back-to-back -back Super Bowl berths as Dak throws for four touchdowns and a yard shy of 300. See if we can repeat as Super Bowl champions. Cowboys can hardly win a playoff game, yet alone back-to-back -back Super Bowls in the 21st century. We'll see if we're able to do it. Kevin Boston only with star dev, by the way. I was hoping to see abilities when I opened him up. That sounds interesting. Uh, but unfortunately, no abilities tab. Jake Ferguson could get superstar dev, though. He probably will, in fact. I mean... 14 touchdowns is crazy. I guess he goes up to superstar dev for sure. Mike is going to be super expensive to extend, but I mean, if he's not the best defensive player in football, he's top two, probably. Maybe top three at the absolute worst. The guy's unbelievable. It's like, growing up, DeMarcus Ware, I was like, God, can this guy just stop being so good? And now, it's Micah Parsons. I'm like, Jesus. They just, uh, they've got one generational pass rusher a decade, it seems like. And it's going to be Colts Cowboys Super Bowl. And I instantly think of a Colts and Cowboys player. Nobody really jumped to mind. That's annoying. I like when it's instant. Alton Baldwin, up to star dev. We made the right choice. Already, you know, a better option than Jalen Tolbert. Colts and Cowboys. I can't think of anyone. Stefan Gilmore. Okay. There you go. I'm, I'm sure there are more, obviously, but at least I got one here. I expect Jake Ferguson to move up to superstar dev. I'd love if our running back moves up, but he doesn't. Ferguson's a superstar now. Tyler Smith, did you win offensive lineman of the year? He sure did. Superstar dev for Tyler Smith. And look at all these ability slots. I don't really know what they do, but I'm gonna give him the top ones. That seems like good stuff. I know secure protector is good. Yeah, big stuff for Tyler Smith. Huge upgrade. Griffin is going to be playing up to an 85 overall as well. Do you have any abilities? They always give him return, man. I mean, how often do you see a starting running back returning kicks? It's very rare. It happens in college a little bit more. I mean, Saquon return kicks from time to time. But um, it doesn't really happen at the NFL level. Like, a, a starting running back. There are running backs to return kicks. But... I don't know. It's a little bit rare. Like, Kane Nwangu's not a starting running back. He's return kicks. Plenty of running backs do, but not starters. So you wonder, why is that a superstar ability for a running back? I mean, Cordero Patterson, I guess, if you want to count him. But I don't know. I, I'm. It's kind of a weak ability as far as they go. But Cowboys, Colts, Super Bowl something 50 something Deshaun Hickman I don't remember him in the draft but he's got superstar x factor also this is at AT&T Stadium so home field advantage here for the Cowboys again see if it ends up mattering 7 nothing Cowboys early Colts tied up in the second quarter Cowboys right back on top we're approaching halftime now into the second half Colts couldn't find the end zone and they only settle for a field goal here 21 10 Cowboys that's gonna do it 21-10 is your final score. Back-to-back -back Super Bowls for this Dallas Cowboys team. We took on huge cap penalties. Lost some big-time players. But we're able to keep a lot of this core together. Even with losing Tony Pollard, Tyler Biotish. Able to keep Tyron Smith and repeat as Super Bowl champions. The Cowboys get another one back-to-back. -back, and now we're in search of the three P. 24 season recap. Dak wins MVP as well as Super Bowl MVP. Alton Baldwin, of course, wins Rookie of the Year. Corner DeAndre Bolden for the Rams gets it. I looked at him in the draft. I think he looked pretty good, but you rarely see a corner win Rookie of the Year here in Madden. But very good year overall for us. We're negative three million in salary cap space, so it's a good look. Am I going to be able to franchise tag? Tyron Smith, we'll see. I think I should be able to. Um, this has not been fixed the entire year. It's not like 
game breaking, I guess, even though it is. Hurts immersion a little bit when two players try to fuse into each other, like it's an X-Men episode or something. Maybe that's a bad reference. I haven't seen X-Men. Should have referenced something I've seen, probably. I don't know about people fusion. It's like we got Siamese twins in Madden. I don't know what to do with that. Or conjoined twins. I'm gonna pick up the fifth-year option on Tyler Smith. Value's really good on that. Of course, it's like a back end of the first round guy. He's obviously a lot better than that. Do want to extend him, but we just don't really have it right now. Tyron Smith is regressing. Brandon Cooks is gonna have to walk. Trey Lance, Israel McQuamu, Kevante Turpin, all those guys have to be gone as well. So we are gonna withdraw on Tyron Smith. Still, like I said, no money, but I will be franchise tagging him if I can. And it's expensive, it really is, but it's better than the alternative, which would be losing him. Kyrie Silas not expected to go until pick number 15, by the way. Incredible value on a top five talent. Where are we? Not inside the top 15, I'll tell you that. No, we are, we have number 11. False alarm, we're at number 11. Okay, so Kyrie Silas is all but guaranteed. And then of course, 32, right? Okay. Things are looking good. Pick number 11, let's just go straight there. I trust the mock draft. The mock drafters, oh, they've never been wrong. I am one. My, my uh, final mock drafts are usually pretty good actually. And it's tough to even get, you know, five correct, let alone, you know, like six, seven plus in the first round, I should say. Kyrie Silas, good speed, or great speed, great strength, A finesse moves, A pursuit, B block shed. I mean, this is our Demarcus Lawrence replacement easily. Hidden dev, 84 speed, 88 acceleration. Is he an instant starter? Well, we retained Demarcus Lawrence for another year, so I'm not positive, but he's going to be a really nice player to have. Probably a starter in year four. And now I have to decide what's next because there are a couple corners that look quite good. We could consider a tackle. I realize that the uh, draft is happening around me. Gabe Williams from Iowa, I thought looked pretty good. Also has elite speed and he's not even the fastest in the class. He's going to go before our next pick. You know, it's tough because we don't desperately need a corner or anything. But he looks really good. I also added some of these receivers to my watch list. I don't think I made them focus players, though. I focused on linebackers because we might be losing LVE and some of these guys do look pretty good. Disappointed in the pursuit of Kevin Burrell, but he's very, very fast. Another Boise State player, funnily enough. Cowboys are like Boise State NFL. There are so many examples of Boise State players they've had. Leighton Van Der Esch, Cedric Wilson, Demarcus Lawrence. I, I mean, even their offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore, former offensive coordinator, was Boise State. And there are even more examples than that. I swear, every uh, uh, Darian Thompson they ended up getting, who was a Boise State guy. Giants drafted him, of course, but... I'm telling you, every Boise State player that the Cowboys could get their hands on, they did for a while. So we have 32, 46, 64, 74 are our impactful picks. Do I trade up for the corner? We probably could. Maybe a one and a three next year. I'd be comfortable moving. It's going to be too tough. It's going to be too tough. I don't really want to give up a ton. So I, I think the corner just ends up being somebody we probably miss out on. Which is okay. A Wyoming quarterback, huh? The last one with elite throw power out of Wyoming worked out pretty well. I'm not going to take a quarterback, but... I mean, it's an interesting idea here at number 32. Ernest Fleming looks like a really good wide receiver. Looks a little bit like Alton Baldwin, to be honest. We could use another wideout for sure. Is Chad Stewart out of Texas better? Not as fast... Tough to say. I think I'm going to draft Adam Carmichael at some point. Power, but elite strength. Future starting tackle, maybe. Just, it's not a this pick type of guy. I think the best value ends up being the wide receiver. And we could use another one anyway. So, Ernest Fleming, I think, is going to be the guy. Looks pretty fairly well-rounded. Good enough athlete. I think the best receiver of the two for sure. Only normal development. We know that's not the end-all be-all because of what happened with Alton Baldwin. 
But uh, obviously, we was hoping for a bit more there. This feels like a good spot to take Adam Carmichael if we want a, a tackle to develop. 340 pounds at 6'8", but looks like he moves pretty well. I think we're going to get a good player here. 93 strength. Yeah, I mean, he's not Tyron Smith, but who is? It's a pretty good pick. Also, Eddie McElroy, day three projected pick, is a true round one to two talent. If we want a linebacker, it's probably him. And there are some really good looking inside linebackers. Are they round one to two talents, though? I don't know. That's tough to say. I think I am going to take another linebacker, though. Tyrone Stallworth, I think, looks like the best one. He's got elite speed, C pursuit, C hit power, A zone coverage, A awareness, A to B block shedding. All that looks pretty good. It is close between these guys. But Anthony Turk at 6'4", 240, and 21 years old, definitely a good athlete. But I think the fact that a guy like Tyrone Stallworth is better is leaning me in that direction. Elite speed, it really looks like a game changer to me. I'm going to make the move. Does have hidden dev, 91 speed. Very, very, very good. It, it's a really tough decision. If I was in my Falcons franchise where I'm really thinking about these, I don't know what I would have done. I really don't. I, I feel like I might have just... They tried to get all of them. <laughs> I don't know. Probably should have drafted an interior offensive lineman. Walt Kane looks very good. We don't necessarily need one right now, but this is, you know, in the future, we might need one. Zach Martin might not stick around forever. But also, we have a guaranteed round one to two talent in Eddie McElroy. Guess we could trade back up for him. Some interesting looking defensive tackles. Let's go Walt Kane though. Just in case Zach Martin decides to hang him up at any point, Walt Kane can be waiting in the wings. 90 strength, 69 speed. Nice. 82 acceleration. Good pick. Trading a three in 2027 and a seventh this year for a fourth from Chicago. That should give us an opportunity to at least take somebody on our draft board. One round away. If we miss out on the round one to two, outside linebacker it's not the end of the world and we will pivot with a defensive tackle again i'm fine with that I, I i gambled over the sure thing shelton jones is a very good player to trade up for elite agility elite change direction great acceleration solid speed decent strength a finesse moves only f play rec is not very good and you know what i think we did pretty well Kyrie silas is a 77 overall we're gonna move him down to defensive end Got decent enough finesse moves, block shedding, good traits. I mean, his overall might not jump up if we move him to defensive end, but that's obviously what he's going to end up being for us. So left end for Kyrie Silas, and his overall goes down to a 76, but doesn't change how good he is, obviously. Ernest Fleming, 75 overall. Looks really solid, but again, looks a lot like Alton Baldwin, which isn't the worst thing. That's the offensive rookie of the year. Adam Carmichael's a 74, really solid pick in the middle of the second round. Tyrone Stallworth ended up being a 72. Walt Kane was a 73. Stallworth, though, I'm just a glutton for speed. Gotta have it. 91 speed, 89 acceleration, good coverage. Now, could those linebackers down the board have been better? Absolutely, absolutely. But I went for the speed. Gabe Williams, by the way, ended up being an 80 overall. He was the uh, corner I was looking to get, and then when we traded it uh, back up, or considered it at least, he was already off the board, and we were looking at some other options, but he was definitely the best one. Ernest Fleming is near the top of the draft at 75 overall. Anthony Turk was a 75. Another player we looked at, obviously. 6'4", 240. Only normal dev on him, but good speed, and we knew it would be. Really good tackling. Coverage isn't so great. So, I mean... Are we that mad to miss out on him? I don't know. He's definitely good. Kevin Burrell was a 74. 90 speed. Also normal dev. I mean, we, we got lucky. We got lucky with the hidden dev. It's probably only star dev, so it's not too much of a difference, but always love seeing that over something else. And then I saw round three. Ziegler, who we looked at as well, was a 75 overall, but also normal dev. Also looks very good. Yeah, definitely looks like the best of the bunch. And then the round one to two talent, Eddie McElroy, was a 73 with normal dev. Looks good, but 
I might be inclined to think that we got the best player of the bunch. I usually get unlucky. This time, I got lucky. Did take him in the second round. 72 overall is the worst of the bunch, but does have the highest dev trait and is the most athletic and fairly well-rounded, so it really isn't too bad. Stallworth, by the way, is a 73 overall outside linebacker. We just might start him. Marquise Bell still sub linebacker, hybrid strong safety. That's the best way to set up this team. Yeah, for sure. This will be the team for season three. Looks very good. You know, obviously we took a slight downgrade in some places to improve other spots. Deron Bland looks like he's in a tough spot, normal dev, but 91 overall playing up to a 92. He's basically the same as Trevon Diggs with superstar X Factor. So our team still remains in really, really good shape. And how can you not expect a three-peat at this point? We've won two Super Bowls in a row. I don't think it's out of the question to expect another one. Five and two at the midseason mark, but the commanders are five and one. We're gonna have to some money to uh, resign a lot of players here, but I'm really just more worried about the three-peat right now. Micah Parsons does not want to be here. He wants to be close to home in Pennsylvania, and we're gonna give him as much as like 45 million per year. So we are handing out contracts that will cripple the team for the duration. But you know what? We're playing to win right now. And that's the most important thing. Trying to three-peat. There's no way we can bring back, you know, most of these guys that we want. So this is not our last hurrah, so to speak. But this, this year has a lot riding on it. Going for the three-peat. This is the last year that the band is truly going to be all together. And we finished 14 and three. You know, you t they talk about Super Bowl windows. Every team has a window. It's a period of time that you actually are capable of competing for that Super Bowl probably. And ours is still open yet closing a little bit. We got to take advantage of every moment. Dak with another really, really good year. Uh, Shelton Griffin had 16 touchdowns, but averaged only 3.6 yards per carry. He was getting the bulk of the short yardage. Uh, situation so that's why he's 16 touchdowns but the low yards per carry still probably an okay year receiving wise cd lamb dominated good production from our other receivers as well but yeah cd lamb of course the standout guy there quarterback sacks dominated by micah parsons marcus lawrence still putting up pretty good years six picks for Diggs, four for bland and the team's just playing really really well still a 14 win season you can't get upset about and we are trying to three-peat. Another first round bye goes with the territory up to this point. I think we've only had first round buys, but that gives us home field advantage, which has resulted in big time wins. Vision round against the Eagles. I mean, we know what we're up against at this point. I think we've dominated them every single time we've played them here in this rebuild. How about another time? Eagles actually up early, seven to three, seven to six now, only field goal so far for the Cowboys. Eagles get one of their own, but finally our first touchdown and another field goal makes it 16, now 19 to 10, going into the fourth quarter. Got to keep this two possession lead. We actually extend it 17 points now. Cowboys brought it back to a two possession game, but it's too little, too late, and the Eagles are going home yet again. They had the lead for a little while, couldn't hold it, and they are eliminated again. Another conference championship for this Cowboys team. One game away from another Super Bowl appearance. Let's get it. Ivory Silas going to go up to an 80 overall. Doesn't really play a ton for us right now, but we know he has star development because he didn't just get an ability slot. So he is good, an 80 overall rookie. I mean, he's closing in on Demarcus Lawrence, really. Lawrence still obviously much better, uh, but will be leaving here in free agency. Still very, very good. But we have his replacement you know, waiting in the wings. 49ers snuck into the playoffs at 8 and 9, went under 500 and made the playoffs. Yet they're a 90 overall team. This could be a little bit interesting. Niners on the board first with a touchdown. Answer immediately, but so do the Niners to our answer. And then we answer and then they answer. A lot of answering. Crazy game of telephone so far that has the Niners up on top until we tie it up at 21. 21 apiece. And finally the lead, 24-21 and the football. Deuce Vaughn is actually our lead back right now. And a big 26-yard catch by Alton Baldwin puts us in a great spot to win this game. C.D. Lamb catch. Writing's on the wall here. This is going to be a touchdown. And it is. Short run in. 10-point game. And 
I mean, it's Cowboys football. And it's another field goal, which means game over. 20-yard pass to Debo Samuel. I don't particularly care. 30 seconds left to go in this game. It's over. It, it would take a miracle. They need two instant touchdowns. All right, that's way too close to being one. But with 20 seconds to go, that's quickly down to five after the runoff. This is the last play of the game. Unless they get uh, two touchdowns on this one play here, they're going to lose. And they do. Game over. Final score, 34-21 as we get the 13-point victory. And that is your ball game. Dak throws for an incredible game. Nearly 90% completion percentage on what was, I think, over 300 yards passing. Tyrone Stallworth does have abilities, by the way. So we drafted him with superstar dev. We really ended up making the right decision for sure. And it's a Super Bowl rematch. Ravens trying to get revenge. Another big season for them. 15 wins. This is what will end up being our final team. C.D. Lamb so good he can't even get upgraded. Would have been nice if Fleming won Rookie of the Year, but I think they moved him on my depth chart. Or I did for some reason, but I... Don't remember doing that unless I just auto-generated, which I probably did at some point. It's a great team. There is really not a weak point on this entire roster. Maybe the interior defensive line. Maybe. Secondary is amazing. Linebackers are great. Offensive line, very, very good. I'm curious on some of these dev traits, though, that were never revealed. I mean, it's likely to be star- Getting a superstar dev left tackle in the middle of the second round would be incredible. And we didn't do it. Here we go. Trying to three-peat. Cowboys, obviously, if you're old, no stranger to success, but it's been a while. It has been a while since they've had real sustained playoff success. But we've experienced it here in this rebuild. Trying to win back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back Super Bowls. Got to beat Lamar Jackson and the Ravens yet again. It's a 7-3 lead as we approach halftime. Cowboys extend that, but the Ravens tie it right back up as we go into the third quarter. It is 10-10, 13-10 now after a field goal. Ravens with a touchdown to take the lead. And we're going to jump in here on offense. Three minutes to play. Second and five. Still a great spot on the field. Just not so great when those linebackers are filling... Uh, and fitting the run like that. There were some lanes we run, uh, wanted to run to, and they filled those up in an instant, but didn't this time. Got to work on their run fitting. And we have another first down. And that puts us in a really good spot to win this game. That takes us to the two-minute warning. I think you guys know, I want this to be the final possession of the game. Don't give the Ravens a chance to answer. There should be some time left on the clock for them. I'm not going to be able to score probably a triple zeros. It's just way too dangerous. But as close to that as possible would be ideal. Third and nine, under a minute to play. We got to have this. Try to run the ball. Did not work. I'm going for Ferguson. Up the seam against Adafe Owe. They got a defensive end in coverage. Big mistake. Jake Ferguson, touchdown. Did we leave too much time for Lamar? How crazy do I want to get? We have timeouts. We have timeouts. I'm going for two. Forcing the Ravens to need a touchdown. Obviously, if we don't get it, field goal wins the game. Got to go for it all in the Super Bowl, especially when trying to win three. And we did not get in. 19-17. All the Ravens needed is a field goal. Obviously, that certainly could come back to bite us. But I've been recording for four and a half hours. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to get that win sooner rather than later. Now we need a defensive stop. Second and four, 38 seconds to go. Ravens with just one timeout. That's perfect. Ah, uh, it's a drop. I actually would have preferred a catch. Third and four. It's a tough spot here. Really tough spot. I mean, the Ravens really only need to get to about the 40-yard line with Justin Tucker. It was a bold call to do what we did. But I, I think I'd do it again. It just didn't work out. 20 seconds to play. Keep going to Mark Andrews. Just don't stretch the ball down the field that's wide open. Oh my goodness, that's likely to be the ball game. What a throw, what a catch. Let him in, let him score, let him score. Nine seconds on the clock, Ravens with a touchdown. 
Uh, it's not looking good, obviously, but we at least do have some chance here. We'll have nine seconds. It's two plays. It's two plays, best case scenario. We're gonna let that bounce into the end zone. All right, from the 25, we have nine seconds. I wonder if they want us to run PA crossers. What about verticals? Scored a touchdown on that last time. We do have timeouts, so we can go over the middle of the field and feel good about it. But, you know, we, we got to get rid of the ball fairly quickly still. Gets us some yardage, but it's not enough. Let's just hope they're in man coverage and maybe we can find a mismatch with Griffin. We have one second. I mean, they too much pressure. But throwing to the running back is our best bet, I think. One second left. They covered what I wanted to do. Game over. But still a good rebuild. Just couldn't three-peat. Obviously went for two. And uh, that results in a Ravens victory. Would have been headed to overtime, likely otherwise. As Dak Prescott and Lamar both throw for 204 yards and one touchdown. Very interesting. But that's the video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Got two Super Bowls, made three. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.